So how disastrous is Facebook earnings really? It's actually quite bad. So this is probably the 69th video you have watched with regards to Meta's latest earnings report. Look, I was also tempted to watch the entire list of videos being pumped out by different creators. But I didn't want to go into the report with a tainted lens. So I'll watch them after publishing this video with my own analysis. However, the video titles are definitely not encouraging. Facebook has a big problem. Facebook is a mess. Facebook disastrous earnings, value trap, missed earnings, and the list goes on. So let's go through a few things that I liked about the report first, because there's not much to go through anyway. First, the biggest bear thesis of Meta, not being able to attract or retain users, are kinda disproven. So this concern first surfaced in the earlier part of the year, when they essentially reported their Q4 earnings back in last year, and Facebook's daily active users actually saw a decline on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Thereafter, at least for the following two quarters in this year, daily active users, daily active people, monthly active people trended back up. So we can keep this concern at bay, at least for the time being. So you should also keep the like button at bay by smashing on it. Don't let it run wild. Moving on to the negatives, there's a whole laundry list of them. So the year-on-year -year revenue for Q2 of this year fell for the first time ever, and moving forward, projections for Q3 and Q4 also suggest that there will be a contraction in top-line growth rate. So if you were to dig into the revenue breakdown by geographical location, you can essentially observe clearly that the US, Canada, and Europe region brought down a huge part of the numbers. On the flip side, Asia-Pacific and the rest of the world continues to steadily creep up. So it might imply a delayed ripple effect to other parts of the world, but it definitely don't look pretty, at least for Europe, for now. Revenue attributed to US and Canada fell by 3.6% year-on-year, while revenue attributed to Europe was down 11.3% year-on-year. This time around, due to the rising interest rates and the flight to safety phenomenon, where the United States dollar continues to strengthen, if we were to account for the FX effect, top-line revenue would have grown by 3.46% year-on-year. So total costs and expenses increased by 22%. And even if we were to exclude the FX impact, 22% cost increase for a 3.4% increase in revenue. It just screams inefficiency. So CAPEX also ballooned by 63%, even though this was kinda guided by the management team beforehand, so shareholders shouldn't be too surprised, but it still reflects badly in cost controls and the deployment of capital. Additionally, it does seem like Meta is trying their level best to squeeze every inch of profitability out of their users and also advertisers. But it's not reflecting in both top and bottom line because of an inherent problem that they have yet to find a solution. The Apple problem. So the iOS 14 changes was introduced back in Q2 of 2021. And it has been a year now and Meta still can't seem to be able to solve it. So it's quite evident as Meta delivered 15% more ad impressions year on year. But the average price per ad fell by 14% year on year. And it essentially negates any attempt of trying to drive up revenue and subsequently profits. So by driving ad impressions up, it would be at the expense of harming the overall user experience and the net effect has yet to be seen. So the user retention is anybody's guess. How irritating does ads have to be in order to stop people from using Facebook and Instagram? Nobody knows. So the promised post-privacy ad attribution model has yet to crystallize and it will continue to hound Meta's valuation. So Meta's business is currently in an extremely tough spot. I think most investors practically don't care about Reality Labs and the Metaverse for now. Heck, most of them probably don't even put much emphasis on buybacks or even a fat dividend yield. The stock is totally dependent on how Mark and his team is going to turn around the family of apps business because it is slowly collapsing on itself. And by family of apps, I mean Instagram and Facebook specifically. At least for 2021, the economy and the demand was artificially propped up by stimulus checks. And you only know who is swimming naked when the tide goes down. So the outlook provided by Meta's management was also an abomination. They guided revenue to be between 26 to 28.5 billion. And at its midpoint, it will suggest a negative 6% year-on-year growth. And since FX headwind is assumed to be 6%, the guidance basically suggests another flat quarter. 
So CAPEX guidance held relatively constant to be between 30 to 34 billion this year. Expenses, however, has been slightly lowered from 87 to 92 billion to 85 to 88 billion due to the more stringent cost cutting and probably headcount discipline. So it was definitely a disappointing Q2 to say the least. Meta mostly blamed macro headwinds and the softening of the entire advertising market. So if you were to just look at Meta on a standalone basis, maybe some investors will be willing to buy the excuses. But when compared to their triopoly counterpart, namely Google and Amazon, Google managed to still grow their advertising by 13% on search. But on a side note, YouTube also appears to be slowing down by a large extent. Amazon, on the other hand, despite coming from a much smaller base, also grew by 22%. So these numbers just makes Meta's negative 1% looks bad. Like really bad. So the silver lining is, Meta does have a proven track record of pivoting their business model in the past. So their stock was also down big time when they transitioned to mobile, transitioned to video, and now transitioning to short form videos. So this then begs the question, what am I doing with my Meta position? So currently, Meta makes up less than 5% of my portfolio. One of my core theses when I initially bought Meta was because of their free cash flow generative ability, which in turn, and by extension, allows them to buy back shares aggressively if it's undervalued. However, as you observe over time, it does seem like the buyback programs are correlated with the amount of free cash flow they actually generate rather than the current valuation of the stock itself. So it's quite counterintuitive from a shareholder's perspective because when free cash flows are high, valuations of the company tend to be high as well because everyone is over the moon about how good these business fundamentals are and how much free cash flow they're able to generate. And the reverse is also true. But I can technically understand the thought process behind such a decision, but it doesn't mean that I agree with it. So for now, I wouldn't be trading in or out of Meta in the near future. I still am not convinced that Meta's mode is significantly impact. But yes, there are clear signs of weakness, but not to the point of beyond repair and hope. Besides, economic mode don't appear and disappear within a quarter or two. I will keep Meta in close proximity and continuously observing it and react accordingly. So we shall see. Meta currently still enjoys many of the inherent advantages that I laid out previously, but some of it are under fire now. So this recent post blew up on Instagram where it was a petition against morphing Instagram into a TikTok-like platform. So in this pursuit of trying to play catch up to their competition, there seemed to be some sort of cannibalization of the platform's mode and it definitely isn't going down smoothly. So I think it's an incredibly tough topic and balance that Meta has to grapple with and only time will tell who is on the right side of this curve and whether they are able to steer this ship moving forward. Just be clear that buying into Meta platforms today, if you're not swinging of course, is definitely because you're placing your trust on Mark Zuckerberg's team to execute. With that, I'll see you in the next video, but more importantly, I will see you on the moon. Goodbye!